Welcome to War Gear Reviews, tech reviews coming to you from rainy old England. And if you're a Sony Xperia fan, then I don't need to tell you why this phone right here is special. But for those of you not familiar with the Xperia Pro i, there's a few things you need to know. This phone has maybe the most advanced camera sensor we've ever seen in a smartphone. It's the same one they use in their RX camera line. It's not the IMX sensors that Samsung and Apple use. This is a CMOS Type 1.0 sensor from Sony. And it's a one inch sensor as well, so it's massive. But that one inch sensor also has an spherical glass lens in front of it. So with a glass lens, as opposed to a plastic lens that we see on most other smartphones, it allows for more light to pass through. It reduces chromatic aberration. And they've also partnered up with Zeiss. So the coating on the lenses have been approved by Zeiss and that's designed to reduce ghosting and flaring and all this kind of stuff. And then on top of that, we have a variable aperture in front of the primary lens that allows you to change the f-stop between 2.0 and 4.0. And this comes in particularly handy when doing landscape photography or product photography. So what I'm gonna do in this video is a little bit of both. I have the Sony Link Bud, so we'll be taking a couple of photos of these. And even though this phone maybe has the most advanced camera hardware we've ever seen on a smartphone, in order to get the most from it, you have to learn how to use the exposure triangle. And that's what I'm gonna teach you how to do in this video so we'll take a couple of photos and i'll give you guys a little bit of a tutorial of how to dial in the perfect manual settings and expose for different types of shots and before we begin if you enjoy sony content then definitely consider subscribing turn on your notifications for more of that in the future anyway let's get this first shot set up So the dog is determined to ruin this photo for me. I've set it all up nicely, and now she's just come in and moved it. Okay, get out of the way, will you? So what I wanna show you guys first is, when you open up the camera, you'll be faced with this, and you're in basic mode as standard. So we could take a basic photo like this. But what we really wanna do is go up here, click on where it says basic, scroll down, all the way down to manual exposure. Now, this is where the exposure triangle comes in. We have the shutter speed here, so we can change that. We can make it much faster. We have the aperture here, so we can change between f4.0 and f2.0. And then we have the ISO, which as a rule, you should always start with this at the lowest possible setting. So I'm gonna leave it on 100 for this one. With the shutter speed, something that I've noticed having used this phone for quite a while now, you really don't wanna go any slower than 1 60th of a second if you're shooting handheld. But you'll notice in this lighting condition, it's way too bright and we don't need to go to 1 60th of a second. But if I wanted to, I could actually change the aperture, close the iris down, and you can see straight away, that actually reduces how bright the image is. Now, something you wanna keep an eye on here is this. This is your histogram. If we go back, if everything's stacked up on the right, then of course the image is too bright and you'll end up with clipping. So you lose all of this detail in the bright areas of the photo. We can reduce that by ramping up the shutter speed and then we can bring back the details in the highlights. Now what we don't want to do is crush details in the shadows. So keep an eye on the histogram. If we go too fast, you'll notice everything stacks up to the left and we start to lose details in the shadows. So what we really want to do is use the histogram here in order to have a nice smooth curve without losing details in the highlights and without crushing the shadow details. So about there looks pretty nice. Now with the f2.0 aperture, we're gonna get that natural blurry background effect. And if we change that aperture to f4.0, we'll have more in focus, but we'll need to adjust the shutter speed or the ISO. And I recommend using the shutter speed to bring back that detail and snap in the photo. Now, the great thing about this setup here is we actually can toggle between RAW, RAW and JPEG, and JPEG on its own. I recommend you always shoot in RAW with this particular phone. So at this point, I wanted to demo the iAutofocus tracking feature on the phone because it actually has maybe the best tracking I've ever seen on any smartphone. So check out these photos. You'll notice in every single frame, the dog's eye is absolutely in perfect focus. And that's because the autofocus points cover 90% of that image sensor. And it really is very impressive. 
All right, so here's the second shot and it's incredibly bright out here. Again, we're in basic mode right now. What we wanna do in order to get the best photo here is go back into manual. And this is where the changing of the aperture will come in handy. Right now, if you look at the histogram, you can see everything's kind of leaning off to the right hand side. We can adjust the shutter speed to correct that. But the better thing to do here, because there's so much to see, is actually stop down to f4.0. Now we can actually have more in focus. We're restricting the amount of light hitting the sensor while we're actually closing the iris down and we'll get a better photo overall, especially when it comes to this kind of landscape photography. Like I mentioned before, if we want a focus point, we can actually tap on a part of the photo to lock in the focus on that particular part there. Keep an eye on the histogram, make sure you're not clipping details in the highlights or the shadows. And what you can also do is go in here and actually customize the white balance. And the great thing about this Xperia Pro i screen is it's a 4K 10-bit display and it's been calibrated by Sony professionals to match the TriMaster displays that they use for making movies. So what you see on the screen is what you're going to get in the photo when you put it onto a computer. And it really is a very good bit of hardware. Anyway, check out this photo. Let me know what you think. Okay, I'm back at the house now and it is nighttime and I'm gonna take a couple more photos, including a night shot for you guys. But I just wanna revisit something that I touched on very briefly when we were doing the bridge photo and that is the importance of the display. So on this phone, we have a 4K 10-bit OLED and it's been calibrated to be as close to the colors as a Sony TriMaster display is when it comes to accuracy. So the great thing about this and something that really separates it from other phones like iPhones and Samsung's is the fact that when you dial in the exposure values on a Sony Xperia Pro i, the picture you're gonna get when you put it onto a computer is gonna be almost exactly the same as you saw it on the screen. And the reason I bring this up is because a lot of manufacturers might oversaturate their screens or make them more vibrant or maybe more orange to protect your eyes. And when you actually take a photo, the way it looks on the phone is not actually how it looks when you put it onto other devices. And that is why the screen is important. And that takes me nicely onto the next bit where I'm gonna show you guys how to manually dial in the white balance so you get accurate colors in your photos. Okay, now I've got the photo kind of set up how I want it to be. Let's go into the camera app, switch from basic to manual once again. Now, it's important to remember that if you go F4.0 here, it's actually gonna be darker because we're closing the iris of the camera down. So less light is getting through. So we do wanna use the F2.0 here so we can allow more light through. Now earlier, you'll remember I said we shouldn't go lower than 1 60th of a second when shooting handheld, and that is true. And you can see in this scenario, actually it's too dark to shoot handheld, but there is still one tool we haven't used yet and that is the ISO. And you can see the ISO is still at 100. That's where it was earlier on in the day when it was daylight. We can now actually boost the ISO if we want to, to bring back some of that information in this photo. Keep an eye on the histogram again. We don't want to go too high with the ISO and start clipping the highlights. So we'll take a photo like this and let's see how it turns out. Now, instead of actually boosting the ISO, what I would prefer to do and would only really do if I had a tripod like this and it's a fixed position, there's not gonna be any camera shake. We can actually go slower than the 1 60th of a second. And the advantage of doing this as opposed to the ISO is we're gonna get less noise in the photo. The ISO really is gonna be your last resort if you absolutely need to get the photo and nothing else is working, then yeah, boost the ISO. Okay, now going back to what I mentioned about the importance of the screen, I've actually placed this color chip card in the back of the photo on purpose. So we can actually use that as a reference point to dial in the proper colors. Now I'm looking at the scene and I'm looking at the screen and the screen right now actually to me is looking a bit too green, particularly the wall in the back, but also when I look at the green chips, they look a bit darker green than what I'm actually seeing with my own eyes. So what we can now do is we can dial in a custom white balance. We go to custom here, we go to adjust, and we have this grid. 
So if it's looking too green, we can actually shift it away from green just by pulling this little dot down one step. And actually just that one little adjustment right there has made the image way more accurate in my opinion. And looking at the color chips again, it's pretty damn accurate right now and I only made one little adjustment. You could play around with this quite a bit, but I'm quite happy with that. Just that one little adjustment right there has dialed in better color in my opinion. And the great thing about these custom white balances is you can actually set three of them and actually save them. The presets are pretty good. The auto white balance is pretty good, but it's important that you know how to manually do it when you need to. Okay, it's after midnight now. It is cold, it's raining, and I'm out here taking the night photo for you guys. So if you appreciate that, a thumbs up, and maybe a subscribe, if you get any kind of value out of this, would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, check this shot out. Okay, so we're now in manual settings, and you can see it's incredibly dark at 1 30th of a second. The ISO is still at 100. The aperture is at f2.0, so that's the brightest. We've got the iris wide open. So in order to brighten this scene and actually capture the detail back there, we need to do a slow shutter speed. And that's why we've got this on the tripod. The other thing we want to do is here in the shooting mode, we want to set a little bit of a delay so that there's no camera shake introduced into the photo. So you can either choose a three second timer or a 10 second timer. I'm just going to do three seconds. So I push the button, three seconds later, it's going to take the photo. I'm going to go very slow with the shutter speed. In fact, we might even go the slowest of all, 30 seconds exposure. Let's see what we get. So you can see what's happened here is it's incredibly bright, far too bright. And also the white balance is off because I forgot to change it away from the setting that I did back in the house. So I'm going to go back here, I'm going to set it to auto white balance, let the phone decide what the white balance should be for this scene. And I'm going to halve that exposure time down to 15 seconds. So let's do another shot. And again, it's still very bright. It's actually turning night into day. And I'm not a big fan of how that's turned out. It's not very realistic. So what I want to do now, I can actually go even quicker with the shutter, but what I'm going to try is go f4.0 and have more in focus. So by shrinking the iris, we're actually going to allow more detail to be captured, but we're also darkening the image at the same time. So there we go. That is a really good picture right there. It's a bit brighter than what I'm seeing with my eyes, but the detail in that photo is absolutely fantastic. So that's a really good example of how you can dial in a night shot. I'm gonna do a couple more around here while I'm here, but uh, let me know what you think of these photos.